Okay, so welcome to another SEO Hangout with Josh Bashinsky. Uh, I have uh, Jack here with me. He's going to ask some questions later on. And if anybody's listening, I see a couple of viewers. If anybody's viewing and wants to join in, by all means, go right ahead. Uh, or if you didn't get an invite, go ahead and post a comment on the page to get an invite. Uh, but before we get to Jack's question, I just had a couple SEO things I want to mention that's going on. Uh, the date today is uh, October 23rd, 2012. So uh, the Link Disavow tool has been used for um, uh, about a week now or so. And uh, people are going crazy. I've been contacted by clients and ex-clients. Everyone wants their links disavowed. And I've been talking to some other SEOs. And as you can imagine, that's the state of things right now is everybody wants their links disavowed. So I want to talk about that a bit. But before I do, I came across something very interesting. Um, on September 27th or so, there was an exact match domain algorithm update. I don't know if you recall that, um, an EMD update. And basically, for years now, exact match domains have had uh, a ranking boost. Um, having that uh, exact match keyword in your URL string, either in the domain itself or in the slash path, uh, seemed to give you a, quite a nice uh, ranking boost. And so you would see... Um, uh, in the top 10 positions, you would see sites that had 10 times less links still ranking in like position 3 or 4 or 5. So this is called the EMD ranking boost, exact match domain ranking boost. It's a very obvious thing. Everyone in SEO knows about it. And on September 27th or so, Google claimed to put out an algorithm that changed that. Well, there's been some uh, rumors that that was not the case. And uh, there's been some rumors that they've now turned it around and put it back or changed it and massaged it. So I want to look at this because it's this very interesting. So look at this. I'll share this screenshot here. This is, um, I'll share this. And Jack, let me know if you can see it. So th this is a, a screenshot of my Twitter. I just tweeted out uh, earlier today. I did a little experiment, and it looks like that exact match domains still have a ranking boost. So this is, if you can't read this very well, this is, um, a screenshot from a very popular SEO program uh, that compares, that does many things, not the least of which uh, compares um, uh, 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 qu query spaces or, uh, or search uh, SERPs to see what's going on there. And uh, so for the keyword, I used acne scar removal cream. Can you see that, uh, Jack? Yeah. yeah. Great. Now take a look at this. So this is the top 10 in Google US, right? According to this program, this is the top 10 for Google US. And so look at, look at this here. Look at the stats for these pages. Now, I am not saying that these stats are absolutely what um, Google is used to rank these days. But in my opinion, they have been for the last few years, and they still are very important signals for ranking. So let's go through this. OK, so look, let's look at this one. Acne scar removal. And the, again, the keyword is acne scar removal cream. So acne scar removal is, would be a partial match. And for our acne scar removal, it's an exact match, right? Now look at this. Its domain age is negligible. The domain age of Amazon.com is 14 years. The domain age of Answers.Yahoo is seven years. This one has a, a domain age of two years. This one has nothing. It's a brand new domain. The page rank, it has a zero page rank, even though a page rank reported by this program, and, and it would be the same for the toolbar, is you know finicky, and uh, you can't draw too many conclusions from it, but still, it's a bit of an indication of, of, of the real page rank that uh, Google still uses. Of course, Google still uses real page rank. Um, just, it's just the toolbar page rank is, is uh, not the real page rank they're using, right? It's a kind of an approximation. But look, it's, it's zero, where other ones have three or two or one. The index number of pages in, in, the, in the index, this one has 41 million, this one has 192 million, this one has 144,000, this one has 21,000, this one here has one. <laughs> it has one indexed page, according to this program. And look at this. This is the referring uh, domains. So this is the referring uh, uh, domains that are linking to the, uh, to, the, to the site, and this is the total number of backlinks to the site. So it has only 137 links to the site compared to the 12,000 linking domains this one has and compared to the 86,000 linking domains this one has, right? And uh, it has a, whole, a total of 244 links in total. But it's ranking number three. Now, 
you tell me, is it, does that tell you that the exact match domain algorithm is gone or that it still works, right? And then My, look. I, if, if I can interrupt, I got a question of there's a hyphen in that yes. domain name. Yeah. And that yeah. should even take it down further, I would think. No? Uh, yeah. Well, see, and that's the thing, right? So take a look at it. Take another look at it. Um, one hyphen, you know, it, it's it's a it's a it's like a Bayesian filter, or it's a that's a, it's like your spam filter. There's a weight. So if you had like four hyphens in there, that might diminish the uh, the effect of the exact match domain. But with one hyphen, it's only one little strike against you out of like a twenty strike system. That is just you know a rough example. It could be a an eight strike system. It could be a a thirty strike system. That's just a rough example to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So so it's very interesting. One, you're, you're absolutely right there, Jack. There is a hyphen in, in the domain name, one. Two, it's not an exact match. It's only a partial match, right? The, an exact match between domain and query would be acne scar removal cream .com or something like that. This one's missing the cream, but still, it still ranks number three, right? Even though it only has 137 linking uh, root domains. Also, look at this, look this one here. Solution for scars is also ranking, you know, very high, position five. And it only has 27 linking domains, according to this program, which is using Majestic SEO as the backlink source. Now, I've noticed that you know it's entirely possible that some sites, um, uh, Majestic SEO and Kemper and uh, uh, Open Site Explorer, these kind of linking programs are great. The problem is, is that they don't see all the links that Google does, because quite often on some backlinking sites, some cough cough black hat or spammy black backlinking sites, typically, they will block all the robot crawlers except for Google so that you can't find these links. Unless, only Google can find these links, right? So it's entirely possible that these sites could have more links, but they're not going to have that many more. And they're certainly not going to have 12,000 or 441,000 uh, linking root domains. So look, so this is very interesting. Look at this. So, so solutions for scars, that is a synonym match, I would argue, for acne scar removal cream. What would be the what would be a synonym, or what would they be looking for if they're looking for acne scar removal? Well, they'd be looking for the solution for scars, right? That is how they've changed the exact match domain algorithm. They didn't remove it; they just made it more nuanced, right? A little bit more granular. They love that word, granular. Googlers are always saying granular. So that's what I think they've done: is that you know this site has even less links than the exact match domain, so it's ranking a little bit lower, right? And it's only a synonym match, so it's ranking lower, but still. It has only 10 indexed pages. It, none of the, uh, that uh, acne scar removal cream is not showing up in the title or is not showing up uh, in the URL at all or the description or the header, right? So there's no kind of weird keyword thing going on. They haven't even optimized the titles for that query. But it's ranking number five in the US, according to this program, for acne scar removal cream, even though it's solutions for scars. So it's a synonym match. So anyway, I found that extremely interesting, both from showing Yes, the exact match domain algorithm is still running. And so, yes, you still apparently get a ranking boost for having an exact match domain. And it can even have a hyphen in it. And it doesn't even have to be a .com. I believe that uh, one that was ranking higher was a .org or .net, if I recall correctly. Not only this, but if you're clever, you can also get a direct synonym, right? So if someone's looking for, um, uh, you know, acne scar removal cream, Solutions for scars might be considered a good synonym, or if they're looking for, um, uh, if the, the search query is um, problem with rats, maybe maybe ratsolution.com or solutionforrats.com would get kind of a boost on this synonym kind of matching, because that's how they work it, right? Like, solution for rats might be 95% accurate in their minds, in their synonym big theosaurus system that Google has, and they, they've written articles about this about how uh, the, the artificial intelligence of this system is uh, about on par uh, with, the, with baboon intelligence. Google it. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Matt Cutts uh, retweeted this because he was proud of it, right? Uh, but anyway, it looks like the exact match domain algorithm might be using some kind of synonym matching. So this is good for internet marketers because there is a, uh, um, uh, a shortage and a competition on exact match domains. So you might, if you're clever, you might be able to think, oh, okay, you know, I want to target, uh, I run an extermination company, I want to target uh, 
problem with with a rat rat problems rat problems in my house maybe maybe solution for rats or ratsolution.com might serve up on some exact match kind of ness and then you won't need to have thousands and thousands of links like your competitors you might only need a couple hundred links right and that's much easier to do both uh, in terms of white hat linking and black hat linking so I, I found that interesting I just wanted to share that with everybody and then Josh, uh, do you think uh, do you think that these are getting a big boost because you know Google is looking at user behavior now and so maybe they're just incredible sites and people just hang out there and they don't go back to the SERPs as you as you said well you know that's entirely possible have you looked at any of these I mean I wonder if they're just killer sites or something well uh, I have looked I can't mention too much I have looked at these this query space and similar query spaces yeah. in my opinion they're probably not they're probably not as well read as maxim.com or something along those lines, <laughs> right? They don't quite yeah, have yeah. the readership of, of, you know, the New York Times. Let's put it that way. But we can run a simple experiment. Let's see. I have the Alexa toolbar here. So we can base well, on not, Alexa. I'm not, so much, I'm not so much talking about traffic. I'm just talking about user behavior. So even if they only had 20 hits, if 100% of those 20 people were happy with what they got, Google's looking at that. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I would agree entirely. Um, to my knowledge, from the information that's been leaked to me by Google and the uh, research that I've been able to do, um, usage metrics uh, and user satisfaction uh, seems to be tracked uh, either in Panda and or triggers Panda. I can't quite tell which one it is, uh, but it seems to have to do with Panda. Now. It is entirely possible that they've merged the exact match domain algorithm with Panda because they were released on the same date recently, right? Panda 20 and the exact match domain algorithm were released on the exact same date. And um, spammy websites that have an exact match domain with hyphens in it is considered to be a quality issue, and quality is exactly what Panda looks at, right? So there could be a correlation there. Either the, the, the two algorithms talk to each other or they're one and the same, right? One or the other. Yeah, that's entirely possible, and that could be that could be factored in there. Um, it's a little complicated, and, and and my general rule of thumb is that Google likes to keep it simple, um, always, uh, because then it, they they run into problems when they make things too complicated. But it's entirely possible. I wouldn't put it past them. But I we could just do a kind of a general off the cuff kind of experiment. Just look at the Alexa traffic. We could eyeball them as well and try to determine to see if they're any good. If if that would be useful. Um, let's what the what the hell? Why not? So let me share my screen here again. Okay. So then let's go to uh, one of them, acnescarremoval.org. Acnescarremoval.org. Oh, when I could type properly. Let's see if my uh, so this is ranking number three. Let's see if my screen updates here on the screen share. Oh, it's a very slow site. That's huh. not good. Oh, now they're calling you on the phone. <laughs> they saw they, they saw the program. <laughs> Acne scar renewable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're giving them free advertisement here. I am not associated with these people in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so this is the site. So it's a squeeze page. So as soon as you get here, it, it's uh, it's uh, m uh, maximized to convert. Obviously, they want you to put your order in right away. So it probably converts really well. Now, does that mean people go here? If they type in acne scar removal cream, we can presume they're looking for an acne scar removal cream. Now, they could be fairly high in the sales funnel, meaning they're still doing the information gathering. Uh, uh, they're still in the information gathering stage and they're not ready to purchase yet. But if that's the case, they'll probably scroll down and read the long sales letter that I'm, I'm sure will be here. Yes, yeah, surprise, surprise, there's a long sales letter. And uh, or they might click in here and start looking at different stuff, right? Or then they'll click back and they'll go back to the SERP. And if they refine their search, or if they do another search, then Google is going to realize that they did not find what they're looking for and then this could factor into a panda review for that site. But uh, I don't, I, the, the site looked fairly well designed as far as I can see. 
So your hypothesis of whether or not uh, panda factors and or user satisfaction is fun uh, uh, factoring into this algorithm is, is neither affirmed nor denied by, by what I saw there. Uh, could very well be affirmed. It certainly looked like a positive piece of evidence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me mention the next thing I want to mention, then we'll get your question. Sound good? Sure. Okay, so the next thing I want to mention is the link disavow tool. So again, this is still a hot topic in SEO right now, and rightfully so. It's pretty much changed the entire game. Uh, and, and you know, late in the, in the fourth quarter here in 2012, we get a game changer, right? So this link disavow tool, in case you've been living in a cave somewhere in Somalia, is a new tool that Google has brought out that you can uh, upload in your Webmaster Tools account to tell Google that these links pointing to me, I don't trust them. Do not count them for my site. I do, want, do not want them to affect my ranking, either positively or negatively. And it's a simple uh, list, like robot text. You simply upload it, and as long as the site is located there, those links are disavowed. If you remove it, those links are no longer disavowed. So you can add links, and you can also remove links. So you can take links away from your site, and you can put them back. Now, you have to... I went over what uh, more in detail what it does, so if you want more detail of what this thing does, go to my last video from last week on my on uh, on wherever you're watching this video, either on YouTube or on Google+. But you have to keep in mind the social uh, 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 crowdsourcing ramifications of this tool for Google because people are disavowing links like crazy. I, pretty much every one of my clients in the last few months, over 100, has contacted me, and they want... They want uh, links to be disavowed, and they're, they're, they're freaking out. As you can imagine, everybody on, on, uh, who has recently had a penguin issue or uh, a natural link notice is trying to disavow their links. Heck, people who've just had a ranking issue or have a panda issue are just disavowing their links too, even though that this disavow tool probably won't help them or might not help them, right? Google has claimed they sent out 99.9% .9 of people who have had a manual action on links and everything else have received a message. So that means if you have not received an, a, a natural link notice from Google and you are a Webmaster Tools user, then if you have not received it, then there is no manual action. So you don't have to worry about that. And then the second thing, if you weren't hit on April 25th, May 25th, or October 5th, those are the three penguin dates. If you were not hit in and around those dates within one or two days, then you were not hit by penguin. And so you do not need to disavow any links. In fact, doing so is only dangerous, right? The only thing you can do is shoot yourself in the foot and actually disavow some good links that Google is counting. You know, there's a proportion of your links that Google has ignored because they are a suspect and Google can't be sure they're genuine donations. And then there's a portion of your links that Google is counting as good because they're satisfied that they're probably a donation. And if you just go disavowing links willy-nilly, <laughs> then you're probably going to get some of the good links in that mix, and you're going to effectively negative SEO yourself. This is not what you want to do. This is the exact opposite of what you want to do. So, I've said the spiel before, and I'm going to say it again, and it might sound like a, a capitalistic, plutocratic money grab, and it probably partially is, but get someone, namely me, to do a link analysis of your links, or at least someone who is equally as experienced and has listened to the hundreds, and I mean hundreds of hours of Google, uh, Google Plus Hangouts from John Mueller to figure out exactly what they're looking at, and has done hundreds of hours of experimentation on top of that, to have an idea of exactly what links are at best useless, so we can safely delete them, or at worst hurting you, so we can delete or disavow those as well. Get someone who knows what they're doing to do a link analysis, because you do not just want to throw links in the disavow uh, text and see what happens. Because... Even if you can't, because I just said you can remove them and get your links back. And that's true, apparently. No one really knows for sure. But theoretically, that is true. The problem is, is that Matt Cutt says, and I quote, your links may not have the same power, end quote. I'm paraphrasing. That's more or less what he said in his, in his announcement. Uh, if you do that. The reason why is because everyone's going crazy disavowing links. And so what do you think Google's going to do when they have, you know, over 500 disavow requests for site ABC linkdirectory.com and uh, you know and so 50% of the outlinks from this site have asked to be disavowed they're gonna just mass no follow all the links outlinks from that site every single outlink from that site is gonna get mass no followed because they're gonna say we can't trust any of these 
because over 50% of the links, the outlinks they have going out, have all been disavowed. So there's going to mass no follow them. They're not going to. They're not. I, I strongly doubt they're going to. They're going to penalize that site. John Mueller and Matt Cutts both have, have said no. We probably won't do that. It's not the same. You can have a really good site, you know, like a, a really good uh, a blog, a highly reputable blog site that just has a bunch of comment spam on it. So what they'll do is they'll just mass no follow all the links. It doesn't hurt the site in question. All it does is hurt all the sites that are being linked to from that site. And that's what they're going to do with this disavow tool. That's my that's my uh, fifty cent prediction. So you you want to disavow the links that are bad, right? Or get ready for leaking changes that are, that are going to happen. Ranking changes are going to happen to you. But at the same time, you want to make sure a professional does the analysis. There. So because otherwise you're going to shoot yourself in the foot and you're effectively negative SEOing yourself. You might as well hire some Fiverr guy to do it, you know, if you want to negative SEO, <laughs> negatively SEO yourself. You know, you might as well derank yourself. Go right in. Okay, so that's my cool. uh, that's my soapbox spiel. So let's get to Jack's question here. Jack, you had a question. Let's let's go with that. Let's shoot. Well, um, I have a number of questions, but a lot of them have to do with the idea of hidden text. And as I said before at the beginning, um, my sites often use jQuery or some other JavaScript, whatever, to mm -hmm. expose hidden text when somebody clicks on something or, or mouse over or whatever. Yeah. Does Google, and the usually it's a div, the style display none, or it could be dis, style display hidden yep. or With overflow the, hidden. Yep. Is that a huge negative? To Google, and um, should I rebuild these sites with everything exposed all the time? My short answer is my short <laughs> answer is no. That should be perfectly fine. With this caveat: one, you're not doing keyword stuffing or hiding anywhere else. Two, you don't are not inadvertently putting a lot of keyword blocks in these in these hidden text. So there I are some keywords, some important keywords in there, but I wouldn't consider it stuffing. For instance, handmade shoes. You go to the site; it's all about handmade shoes. Yeah. And then it's going to say uh, there's a thing about place your custom order. I would uh, like it to say place your custom. You know, it opens up, and I would like it to say place your custom order for handmade shoes instead of just place your custom order. And that technically is hidden until they open it up. Is that a problem if it's just one more time in there? Again, everything works on a filter uh, and there's thresholds, right? Uh, so again, if that's the only place you're doing it, I don't think that'll be a problem. But if you have a huge footer, I've seen this in Penguin, right? Did you have any Penguin drops? You know, I haven't really checked. Uh, I, I haven't checked for that. Okay, uh, you, you'd notice. I know that's the yeah, that's really the very next thing I have to do. Uh, you'd, you'd notice it'd be a waterfall drop on either April twenty fifth, May twenty fifth, or, or October fifth, right? Yeah, 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 more or less. Yeah, yeah, uh, and it's pretty noticeable, so you'd notice it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but if you haven't had that, then you're probably fine. Yeah, um, you know it, it. It really is. Although, uh, although, admittedly. I, I could be wrong on what I just said because I just remember an experiment I ran. I had a test site that I, I, I thought, okay, let's see how good Google is at detecting hidden text. I haven't used hidden text ever, and no one who really knows what they're doing has used hidden text as an SEO tactic for like the last 10 years, in my, to my knowledge. But I, if Google is still looking for it, I guess people are still using it. But uh, in the circles in which I associate, no one has seriously used it really ever or at least for 10 years. Anyway, that being said, I thought... I want to see if this is factored into Penguin or not. And so what I did is I made a site and I made a big, huge, ugly div with a bunch of hidden text, just repeated, you know, again and again and again. And as soon as it was spidered, about two weeks later, this was not on a Penguin date. That site was like de-indexed, like boom, right out of the index. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, okay, they're pretty serious about that. So, you know, and it was just a simple div with a bunch of keywords in it. Now I repeated the keywords like many, many times, like like with a whole paragraph of just like red apples, red apples, red apples, like a hundred times. So this is not what you're talking about. But you know, obviously, somewhere between what you're doing and what I did is the threshold. You know, and who knows exactly where it is precisely. Yeah. Um, so my answer is this: is if you want to be absolutely safe, then you might consider not putting ranking keywords in in display none or visibility hidden areas. Mm -hmm. But 
And and if you have like a huge keyword block of exact match uh, uh, anchor text and a whole side nav of exact match anchor text, and you have exact match anchor text in the top, like then it starts to add up. Especially if you have the title attribute. The title attribute is is not the title tag, but the title attribute is used on the image tag or the anchor tag. Uh, and people sometimes WordPress blogs automatically stuff keywords in there. And John Mueller has specifically said not to do that. Yeah, that was one of the first changes I made after I saw one or two of your very first YouTube videos. I went oh. through and took out all the title tags from the anchor text. Great. Yeah, so because good. the title attribute doesn't help you at all, right? Yeah. Same with the meta keywords. And the meta keywords helps you rank in Bing and Yahoo, but doesn't help you rank in Google. So, so if you Bing have Bing is still using uh, the keywords meta tag. Yeah, I personally. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't I, even use it anymore. I have. I've stopped using it a long time ago. Yeah, I personally spoke with Dwayne Forrester at SMS Advanced in June. I actually personally had a conversation with him. Great guy, very personable. He was standing there a little. I don't know if I should tell this story or not, but I will. He was standing there a little bit lonely and a little bit dejected, right beside the SEO Moz uh, 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 stand. And so everyone was going to talk to SEO Moz and Rand Fishkin, and Dwayne Forrester at the Microsoft stand was standing there, kind of. No one wants to talk to me, so I went and I talked to him. It was great. He, had, he has tons of SEO knowledge, of course, and wow. uh, he, he told me all about the meta keywords and how they're using it and what's going on. And I would have talked to him for longer, but he had to go and make a presentation. Yeah. So yeah, great guy. Anyway, if you have any uh, traffic from Bing and Yahoo, you can't just go delete the meta keywords, but you can trim them down so they're not repetitive, right? Yeah. yeah. And that would work fine for Google as well. But I say, if, but I, I always err on the side of caution, and I say, if you have no Bing or Yahoo traffic and you don't care about it, then just delete the meta keywords altogether. Yeah. But so I'd be willing to look at your site on camera here to 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 do analysis of it if you want, or or if you don't want to to have your site on on camera, I fully understand, and and I could just explain a little bit more verbally. It's up to you. Yeah. Well, I'd rather contact you privately about that. Oh, sure. That, that's. Uh, but, sometimes, sometimes but, I only mention it because sometimes people like to see the site and then sure. I show I show concrete examples. But but no, that's yeah. no problem at all. Then yeah. I would say, as as I said, unless you have big footer block text of 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 internal of, of internal exact match anchor text, they have really cracked down on that lately with Penguin, and unless uh, or some other algorithm that was released around Penguin, and or uh, unless you have you're doing that quite a bit, you might have a problem. But otherwise, if you haven't been hit yet by those. Then, then you're probably safe. Just don't try and do it any more than you already are. Yeah. Got another question? If you can do it. Oh yeah, no, yeah, we got plenty of time. Well, um, it's about duplicate content. Yeah. And what I've been doing, what I started doing about three years ago on a couple of my main sites, uh, they're product sites, and when somebody types a search looking for a particular kind of product on my site mm -hmm. or they uh, they click on a link it actually goes to a search engine that's in my shopping cart so they immediately go off of my site yeah and that's been working really well up until this year and I think what's happening is Google is saying hey these people are looking at his home page and then they're going off site and the rest of it looks exactly like my site but it's actually being served from my shopping cart because my shopping cart has a great search engine in it yeah okay so I'm considering creating unique pages as unique as I can for the most common queries like a hundred most common queries and then I would have a hundred new pages on my site which I think is a good idea but the problem is a lot of those sites are gonna they're gonna have the same header the same menu on the left which is a lot of hidden links and, and like I said before you click on it and a whole bunch of stuff opens up mm -hmm. uh, so and it looks like it's gonna look like duplicate content like crazy a hundred pages that are very very similar because all the header is the same and all the links on the side are gonna be the same and yeah. even some of the results are gonna be very similar because if somebody's looking for handmade handmade slingbacks and handmade pumps it's still handmade and they may even get the same pictures and the same descriptions of the same products. Yeah. So what would you suggest? I mean, it almost feels like I can either go one way or the other. I can still keep doing what I'm doing or give it a try and create these 100 pages, which wouldn't take that long because I could just scrape it from the search results on that engine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. 
Yeah. Um, it's not so much a duplicate content issue as it is a user satisfaction issue. So there's two kind of there's two kinds of duplicate content. There's technical dupe content, which is on on site, and there's malicious dupe content, which is site copies site A copies site B. Technical dupe content is completely ignored by Google. Worst case scenario for dupe, technical dupe content content is they're just going to realize that those you know maybe 30 pages you make are unique enough to rank. The other 70 pages you make are too duplicated, and they'll just essentially ignore them. And if someone does a, they'll keep them in the index. And if someone does a special query that one of those duplicated pages happens to serve, as, as far as their algorithms are concerned, they'll serve it. But otherwise, they'll ignore it. Now, if uh, you were to do this across domain on site A versus site B, site B could have a, a duplicate content uh, not a penalty, but it could have a black mark against it for Panda, perhaps, because of the duplicate content. The other Panda issue is the user satisfaction issue. So that, in my opinion, is a much bigger issue for what you're talking about. Because if the pages you create uh, are not satisfying the, the user request, it's entirely possible, and they're very cookie cutter in terms of design, it's very possible that you could run afoul of either the page layout algorithm or Panda in the sense that they're essentially duplicate and they're not serving uh, usage satisfaction. The user, if the user goes there and then exits the site and clicks another site in the, in the SERP or, um, or refines their search and the search is close enough in synonym matching that Google can determine that your site did not serve that search query, I think that could tr trigger a Panda review for you and those um, low value pages that are highly duplicated and not adding very much value might act as boat anchors bringing the rest of the site down. Yeah. So I would recommend that if you're going to make those pages, try and make them unique. Try and hire uh, writers. You can get pretty decent writers for pretty cheap these days. And if you have a local college in your area, you might want to hire some students. They might even be able to do it for free if you're willing to give them a really good reference or a really good uh, um, uh, a cover letter or reference letter on their resume, for example. Um, they might even write a few for free. Get some custom written ones. You know, it doesn't have to be that long, two or three hundred words that are unique. Throw some photos in there, maybe some videos of people wearing the shoes or whatever you got. And uh, that could keep eyeballs on pages and could, uh, could satisfy uh, user, user satisfaction and yeah. get you a bunch more ranking pages that could rank for more long tail and get you more traffic and more rankings. Yeah, so that'll brilliant. Be brilliant. Thanks, Josh. No problem. Got another question? Well, um, I use iframes quite a bit. Now, mm -hmm. I don't use them for navigation or anything, but on my site, um, for instance, I have uh, uh, fading text and fading images and things like that that I've used for a long time on different pages. And rather than rebuild them on these results pages, I just stick an iframe in there and call it from the iframe. Okay. And I always put no index on the iframe page itself, which I think is a good idea. I don't know. You, you know better than I do. Uh, but is Google going to... If Google sees a bunch of iframes on a page, is that going to be a problem? The short answer is no, um, especially that you've no indexed them. Google won't even see them. Um, well, they'll go to the page and they'll see the iframe there. Yeah. So they'll know I'm using iframes. Yeah. I, mean, I realize it won't go into the index, but... Yeah. No, it's not, it's not a problem at all. Okay. I mean, Google... Uh, uh, John Mueller has been asked this question a number of times, and, and I can't quite understand what he means when he answers, but... So my understanding might be a little skewed, but it seems to me that if Google even reads the iframe at all, it's, it's considered the different URL, right? And they do sure. this kind of weird kind of amalgamation of the URLs. So, so um, it's not a problem. They, they handle it automatically. I don't think you need to no index it. Um, you don't need to no index it. No, I, I, don't, really. think, I don't think you do. But, it, but these iframes are just like useless. I say, I'm afraid, to use your term, I'm afraid these different uh, iframe, the actual pages themselves are like boat anchors out there because there's, if, you, if somebody went there by themselves, they go, this is useless. What does this do? You know. Oh, well, I see, I see. Well, from that perspective, it might be good to keep them no-indexed. Yeah, okay. Um, 
but yeah, it, that being the case, that Google's not going to count them or, or not going to look at them in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, yeah. But but having a no having an, an iframe there is not a problem at all. Yeah. Well, one thing that's kind of related to that is uh, sometimes I'll have I'll create a he a header, for example, and I'll put all of that at the bottom of the HTML, and then I'll do a uh, CSS so that it appears at the top. Mm -hmm. Now, is Google? I mean, in the old days, that never was a problem. But you know, you know how Google has been in 2012. <laughs> is Google going to see that as I'm trying to cheat Google by putting my header stuff at the bottom, <laughs> hoping that Google will spider the top stuff first? Because that's not why I'm doing it. Honestly, <laughs> Google, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not guilty of that. Yeah. It's just convenient for me when I'm building the site to put all the the goop at the bottom because it doesn't really change that much. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah, Google's been very ornery in 2012. <laughs> uh, that's one yeah. adjective I could use. No, the, the short answer is no, that's not a problem at all. Um, as long as the, 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 the algorithm that they uh, render the page is, is essentially, Googlebot is essentially a, a stripped down version of the Chrome browser. And so they render the page and they determine logically where all the elements are and whether they're on canvas or not. They're off, they're off canvas. If they're off canvas and they have keywords in them, then that's a problem. Uh, again, with a certain weight. If you add that to a couple other keyword stuffing, then that could be a problem. But because you're rendering on, on canvas, it's not a problem at all. So, um, and uh, when I go out and Google, even if I'm logged out of Google and I look at the SERPs, they know who I am. They see my IP address. They look at my cookies, and even if I dump cookies, so where is a reliable place I can go to see global or at least U.S. or Canada uh, SERPs that are not influenced by my behavior? That's an excellent question. It's actually quite hard to find, but I have code for you to do it. So just email me, and I'll email you the code. Okay. Um, I hit I hit a specific data center uh, that's in the, that's in the states. And I uh, use certain the, the certain uh, query string parameters to specify it's a U.S. search. So that that is the only way to get uh, that I've found to get uh, a non-cookie based, non-based on my IP, uh, hitting their specific data center every time, no matter where I am. Uh, real, honest to goodness search from the, from the states in this particular case. But you can change the uh, the the country code in the in the query string to be whatever country you want. Yeah, I see. Cool. And I've tested it. I've gone. Uh, I have uh, virtual private servers, and you know, in various places in the world. And I've tested to see if it actually looks like that, and it does. Yeah. Sometimes there's like a one or two spot difference between between a site, but 99.9% .9 of the time, as far as I've tested it, it's it's accurate. Yeah. So I'm perfectly willing. Anyone else listening to this, I'm perfectly willing to share that code. If you want to see what it looks like in a particular country without cookies. Without your personalization, without your geolocation, I can do that for you. It's a simple code. You just click it. It's a simple link, and it opens up in the browser. All you have to do is email. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I have another question for you. Shoot. <laughs> um, I have a number of clients that I know Google. I'm pretty sure that Google knows that these clients are mine. A lot of the IP addresses are the same, and if they're not, the who is information might be similar. And if that's not even similar, I'm visiting these sites quite often to check up on them. So I don't think there's any way to hide the fact that I have a connection, at least, with some of these sites. So my question to you is, maybe Google, want, Google wants me to avoid linking up these sites entirely. Or should I just make sure that I don't use exact match? I'm not an exact match. I mean keyword phrases in my links, and just use, for example, uh, slingback shoe, custom slingbackshoes.com instead of slingback shoes. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I can I can speak pretty definitively on this. Uh, Google has been pretty pretty straight with this. That if you're giving what's called an attribution link, you're attributing your source or you're attributing a, a collection of sources, then yes, it's perfectly fine to put those links in the footer. It would be perfectly fine anyway. Oh, even in the footer? Yeah. Because I, be, I, that's yeah. kind of like a site-wide link, which is... Well, yeah, yeah, no, you, okay. you can do that. 
Um, you could do it anyway, uh, assuming you're not doing any other black hat linking, right? You, you might just, it might be the straw that broke the camel's back if if 60% of the links are black hat and already suspect anyway. Yeah, but, so that's the Bayesian filter that you're talking about all the yes. time. There's a, there's, a, there's a threshold beyond which you, thou shalt not go. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a number of thresholds that work in very complex ways, so I don't think it's a simple threshold. Um, but, but to answer your specific question on this point, there'd be no problem with putting it in the footer for site-wide, but, but I would not use the uh, exact match uh, query. I would use the, the actual name of the domain, dot tld whatever it is yeah yeah great that that should be fine not only should that be fine but I, I i think that google will actually count that link if you made an exact match link they just ignore it if you use it the url they'll probably count it and it'll probably pass some juice yeah. I had a, a trusted customer who, who ran this experiment and he had a bunch of sidebar links that were exact match links and he changed them all to to url links mm -hmm. and he got a, a ranking boost so that tells me that Google was ignoring those exact match uh, yeah. uh, links because they, they looked a little suspect. Yeah. Fabulous. Thanks, Next question. Josh. How many can we do? Oh, you want one more? Yeah, go. Okay. I, you are such a font of knowledge, and I'm so glad that I discovered you, but you really, you really know what you're doing, Josh. I really appreciate it. Um, Thank you for the compliment. I, at the bottom of all of my pages, uh, on one of my sites, which is a pretty big site, I have a link back to my home page that has my main keyword phrase in it. Mm -hmm. Is that a bad? Is that a bad deal? Uh, again, it depends on how much you're doing exact match linking in general. Uh, but it, it, if you're if you're really worried about it, it could be an issue. Just to be absolutely safe, you might want to make it a URL link, as I just mentioned, because it's in the footer. Uh, especially if you're linking to that URL in other places, in side navs, in, in, in editorial, you might want to make it a URL link just to be sure. Or just call it home. You could call it home, but uh, that, I mean, link might, that link might be ignored as well. Uh, I would make it, uh, unless it looks really weird, I would try to make it the URL or the, or the name of the, your brand. Something that's partial okay. match, not exact match. Okay. Or, or the okay. URL. Or the yeah. URL is fine. Because then it's more likely that Google will pass juice, right? So you mean by the URL, you don't mean the HTTP colon slash slash. You mean the, you know, the anchor text would actually say customhandmadeshoes.com. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Because not only does that have a partial match and exact match in it, it's a URL link. So it's, it's yeah. a better chance for for Google to, to count that link. There's, there's yeah. three categories of, of status for, for Google, right? No follow, completely ignored, uh, counted in passing juice, or uh, positive juice, and counted in passing negative juice, right? Because mm -hmm. it was hit by a penguin, or maybe it's possible there's some negative juice in the manual action side as well, uh, which seems to definitely be the case, because if you can delete links and your ranking increases, well, and there seems to be some negative, uh, either penalty applied after the fact, or actually passes negative juice like the, the penguin links seem to, algorithmically. Yeah. So those are the three statuses. So you don't really have to worry about this one, because it doesn't sound like you're doing very much black hat stuff. Really, it seems that you have to worry about just, is the link ignored right now, or can I make it pass juice? To make it pass juice, I would make it a URL link, and so it yeah. looks like it's an attribution link. Yeah. I, I don't tend to be a black hat guy at all, I'll, although when I'm looking at the people that are ranking above me, you know, they've got 27,000 links, 50,000 links, and I'm far less than that yeah. because, you know, I've never bought links or, you know, done the link farm or any of that stuff. Yeah. And as you mentioned, I think it was a couple weeks ago, you were talking about uh, some of these categories of products that unless you're doing some black hat, you don't have a prayer of being on page one. So yeah. I'm not really in that category. Yeah. However, when I look at the people above me, as far as I can tell, other than what we've been talking about during the last you know, six months, Penguin and Panda, yeah. it looks like the biggest difference, I mean the only major difference between them and me, other than what I said, you know, uh, 2012's Google going nuts, is the number of links. And they're killing me on the number of links. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and I hate to venture into the black hat area but you know yeah 
And well, I like what you said. You're neither black hat nor white hat. You're like, you want to do what what works. Yeah. And what's wise for the niche, which to me makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you're that. That's very interesting. You say that because a lot of site owners like yourself, uh, you know, a lot of them are in the exact same position, and they're wondering, you know. And they have been for the last few years wondering, should I go more black hat? Is it too much of a risk? And I would say it's definitely getting more risky. Uh, from what it sounds like to me, in your particular situation, I, I probably wouldn't recommend going the black hat route because it sounds to me like you're a good marketer, you're a good brander, uh, and um, you sounds to me like you're in a good position uh, where your competitors, if they've been doing more black hat, they may not be, right? And so... There's two factors you have to keep in mind. One, their risk increases every year Google gets more draconic. Where your, whereas your risk stays the same, their risk increases. Not only that, the second factor is social. Social is the dark horse in this race. It sounds to me like just, you know, from the very little information I've gotten just from the conversation with you, but it sounds to me like if I was to make from the hip judgment, you're probably in a better position to, to out-social them because you sound like you're a more legitimate business and you have more legitimate products and a more personable thing going on. And although social has a very little ranking effect right now, like maybe 5%, if that, it's, you know, all signs point to it's going to be bigger in the future. And so that's the two factors. You could probably outcompete them on social. And if you just keep doing that now, like, you know, like white hat social right now, trying to get buy-in from people, get, get the social buzz going, on whatever uh, networks you can. It sounds to me like Pinterest would be your biggest friend there, right? Mm -hmm. Pictures of yeah. shoes goes a long way if my wife is any indication, right? <laughs> uh, you know, there's hours and hours. Of, uh, this might sound sexist, but I don't care. There's hours and hours of, of time we're watching TV, and I turn, over, turn to my wife and I say, did you see that? Wasn't that funny? And she's you're got her face buried in her iPhone looking at shoes on Pinterest. <laughs> So for, for your industry, it sounds to me like Pinterest would be your friend in Facebook. Good, I, want, I want her email. Maybe I can sell her some slingbacks. <laughs> maybe you can. Maybe you can. Email me and I'll send you the, <laughs> uh, the, the code I was talking about, and then, then uh, maybe I can pass her your email to, to yourself yeah. as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so social is going to be your friend, and it sounds to me like you can out-social them, so you have a competitive advantage there. And their links are going to be continuously ignored, continuously penalty-grabbing, right? And so their risk increases where your risk stays the same. So at this stage in the game, it doesn't sound to me like you will want to risk Black Hat SEO on your main web properties. Yeah. If you wanted to get freaky with it, if you wanted to get a little bit adventurous, you might consider doing some uh, network of sites and trying to do Black Hat on them, some kind of high sales funnel. I want to know about, uh, I don't know if this applies to your industry, maybe, maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but... I, at the high end of the sales funnel, when people are looking to buy shoes online, what kind of queries are they typing in? You might want to make some blogs that speak to that interest that then could funnel the traffic to your sites, and then you could use more blackout tactics there, and then they can get hit, and if they get hit, fine. But again, at the end of the day, like any business venture, it is a, you have to do your SWOT analysis, you have to do your risk-reward analysis, you have to do your money analysis to see if it is the TCO for making those sites and the black hat to rank them is really going to get you that many more sales as opposed to just spending that marketing dollars on marketing your main sites with social, getting awesome content written for your sites, these hundred pages you're talking about, yeah. and uh, you know, good white hat link promotion. Uh, you know, and there's tons of ways to get good links from doing that. And, in, and you'd be actually in a good position to do white hat linking. Again, probably most of my viewers don't hear me talk about white hat very much. And it's not because I eschew White Hat. It's because m most of my customers, unfortunately, are in industries where White Hat's not going to help them very much. You uh, sound like a person where White Hat could really help you, right? Where you can get these uh, pictures of shoes going on, and, and, and people love that, right? People who are into shoes love pictures of shoes. And so you can <laughs> yeah. get tons of links. There's all kind of Instagram viral memes you can do with shoes. There's all kind of videos you could do with shoes. Uh, you know, th there's probably not enough videos in your industry of shoes, right? Uh, I'm thinking like a model cat. There's plenty. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's a lot of. <laughs> oh, is there? Okay, so oh, it shows, yeah, you, yeah. shows you how little I know. Well, we could probably get inventive with the uh, Animoto videos of shoes. Oh, sure. Probably. No, I think it's now. an excellent idea. Uh, they, the other thing that I'm just kind of uh, playing around with is 
SEO for video. I know nothing about that, so that's like the next thing I'm going to oh, okay. you know, eventually, after I clean up my largest couple of properties using your yeah. good advice about the boat anchors and all that yeah. stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to attack video SEO. One, one more, more thing that I just thought of is yeah. um, uh, it, I know that the age of a domain for a while had a lot to do with how well you ranked, but has that gone away or is it pretty much the same as it always has been? Um, it's gone away a little bit. Uh, it, it, uh, when I showed you that, um, when I showed you that, um, yeah, the SEO, uh, when I showed you that, was majestic, top, majestic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that so was actually, it was a brand that new was from Market data. Samurai, actually. The program oh. is Market Samurai that I got that oh. from. Oh, okay. I, I don't work for Market Samurai, I'm not even an affiliate of theirs, but it, it's not a bad program. Uh, that's all I'll say about it, right? That's where I got it from, anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Well, the age of the domain. Right. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. It, it, as you can see, it's. It, I think it's our ranking factor. Um, I think it's a ranking ranking factor in terms of whether they trust you or not. I think it's a ranking factor in terms of if you're a new domain and you have a bunch of exact match links from these low quality blogs. That gets to be a problem. But has the but importance a, of it gone down? If the importance yes. of the age has that yes. been reduced? Okay. Yes. So I think it's a bigger factor negatively than it is positively, right? If you're an old domain, then they're kind of like, yeah, yeah, big deal. But if you're a new domain with it, with suspect links from suspect sites, then that gets to be a problem. Yeah, so gotcha. Young is a, is a weighted issue. Being older for a domain is is not so much a, a weighted issue. Yeah, cool. It might, it might have a bit of an effect, but mm. but uh, it doesn't seem. To so you're saying uh, social signals in general uh, on one of your. Previous Hangouts, you were talking about that Google looks at uh, Google Plus and Twitter more than Facebook and Pinterest and StumbleUpon and all these others. It, it, do you think that'll change? And and also you said it's it's just a little bit of a ranking factor, like five percent, but you expect that to expand. Could you talk about that a little bit more in terms yeah. of Twitter and and Google Plus being more important than Facebook or something? Yeah, else? yeah. So I mean, of course. Twitter and, and Google um, used to have a, 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 an agreement. So Google has actually gone and wrote specific algorithms to analyze tweets and, and Twitter information, followers, retweets, and, the, and they've admitted they have uh, algorithms to analyze all that. And it used to be in play. You could see it very easily work when uh, Google had the pipe from Twitter. Now, Google and Twitter, uh, about a year and a half ago now probably, uh, cut that pipe off. And so Google no longer has direct access to Twitter, but they still spider it, right? And so there's been lots of studies that have, they claim to prove that uh, Twitter uh, links and Twitter signals and Twitter followers and retweets and whatnot help any sites associated with that rank a little bit better. I'm not so sure if that is the case. My own experiments don't really show that at all, and it has much of a factor. Google Plus One seemed to have a bit of a factor helping stuff rank, but not too much. Uh, and... Uh, what seems to have a more of, of an effect, if you have the authorship markup on a page, if you're encircled at least 300 times, it seems then that you get a bit of a ranking boost and your author snippet will show up. That's the only thing I could, I could find that, that seemed to work. Also, of course, if you have the author snippet, your click-through rate will increase, so that's good. And if, uh, if, you're in a techno if you're in the technology sector and people are logged into their Google+, Plus, and people have been sharing you and plus wanting you, well, then all their friends are going to see that as well. But it really only helps if you're in the technology sector because that's really the only good market saturation that Google Plus has. Right? Mm. In the shoe sector, in, the, in, uh, in fashion, I'm not so sure that anyone is using Google Plus. Mm. Uh, but in Twitter and Pinterest and Facebook, those would probably be your best bets and whatever other specific social uh, 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 sites already exist for, for those things. Right? Yeah. Um, so I would see those ranking uh, bonuses increasing. And if you're getting, I mean, it is going to help you in the sense that if you're getting good uh, user satisfaction from these networks, that could help you for Panda. The jury is still out of whether or not they use generic ranking signals. They claim they don't use Google Analytics ranking data, but they dance around the issue a lot. And an SMS Advanced 
when Danny Sullivan asked Matt Cutts that question point blank, I, I, I will point something out. He did have to go and ask before answering. He's like, I don't know, I'll have to check. So if he has to go and check, then you can be damn sure they're using that data for something, right? Otherwise, you would just yeah. say, we said, nope, not using sure. it. So, and, yeah. and you have to be very careful what you ask Google. Everyone always asks Google, do you use bounce rate? Do you use the analytics bounce rate? And they're always like, no, nope, we do not use the analytics bounce rate. But they're always very precise in the way they answer, right? Bounce rate means absolutely nothing. It's the exit percentage that means something, right? It's you, you go to a SERP, you click on a link, you go to a site, and you and then you exit back and click on another link. That tells them that you didn't get satisfied, right? Yeah. Bounce rate is totally irrelevant to that. It's 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 inconsequential. So anyway, so social is not making that big of an effect at the moment, but uh, for for a ranking. But if you can get a good social following, heck, you can sell off that, right? Some yeah. people, it's hard to sell off of social, very hard, but but some people are doing it, especially on Pinterest. I think Pinterest could definitely, you know, if you're not already there, it could definitely be your friend. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, so I mean, I think it's worth looking at for that reason alone, but also then the links that you can get from it and the signals that I think they're going to work into the algorithm in the future. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks a bunch, awesome. Josh. Well, thank you. So yeah, that. That's a that's a good place to end it. It is about six forty-five my time, so uh, I just want to thank Jack again for uh, jumping in. Uh, uh, for, uh, Jack, if you want to email me, I'll send you that code. I'll also send you SEO Moz recently did a whiteboard Friday on uh, on doing SEO uh, for video that I found was really good. Uh, I, I did a quick search. We were talking. I couldn't find it, but I do have it bookmarked on one of my other computers, so I can send that to you. And uh, anybody else who wants to email me, by all means, it's joshpashinsky at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at joshpashinsky. And uh, uh, Jack, if you want to plug your shoe site, by all means, you can, go so, you, you can do so. Or if you want to let people wonder what it is and search for it, it's up to you. Uh, I, don't mind, I don't mind shameless uh, self-promotion. Uh, well, thanks for offering. I think I'll... I won't mention it right here and now. Sure. Well, you already but, mentioned the site anyway <laughs> before. They can actually, rewind. I think I did. Yeah, so uh, they, they can rewind if they really want you. Yeah, so if, if they're on Google watching this, they're going to rewind it somewhere yeah, in the middle. There you go. So, so if you want to buy shoes for your significant other, by all means, go buy shoes. So, okay. So, thanks a lot, Jack, for joining in and your questions. Excellent questions. And uh, anyone who wants to join in again, the SEO Hangout is at 5:45 p.m. Pacific time. It's a free Q&A. You can bring your questions, and usually I have a bit of a rant and then people ask questions. So thanks for coming again, Jack, and uh, we'll see everybody again next week. Thanks, Josh. My pleasure.